so I can dance. <laughs> it's not really. It is so I can pull up these jeans, which I put on for you guys especially. I feel like I've worn them for two years. <laughs> if I'm going to hang out with the cool kids, I'll hang out with the jeans. So, um, yep, kia ora, I'm Shelley. Oh, I don't even know what I'm going to say to you guys tonight. No, I do. I've got three stories to tell you. And the first one is about when I started uni, which is about, it was about 300 years ago. But it happened to be three days before I turned 17 years old. I had my first day at university, and that was at Victoria University in Wellington. And I can still remember it because I was this very quiet, very shy, I'm not lying. <laughs> it's true, I was, I was super quiet back then, I'm making up for it now. Um, I, was, I was really quiet and really shy, but fairly aware of myself and I remember looking around at all the other brand new uni students who were walking around with their mouths wide open like, <laughs> like they didn't know where they were going and what they were doing and they were just so overwhelmed and, oh, and just going, oh my gosh for sake shut your mouth <laughs> can't you see what you're doing <laughs> yeah, but that, that's really not the story but I remember it very very clearly when I was at university I studied English why because I was kind of good at it. I knew what it was. Did I have a plan? Not even a little bit. No plan. What was I going to do with an English degree? Well, people still ask me today. What do you do? <laughs> I didn't have a plan. I was just like, I'm, I'm going to go to university. I'm going to get a degree. I can do English, so I'm going to do that. That's, that's about as much purpose as I had. I also studied linguistics because I really liked languages and that was pretty cool. I studied French because I'd already done it four years and I, I figured, why well, I don't want to waste those four years, right? So I can still kind of say, je m'appelle Rochelle. <laughs> J'habite en Hamilton. That's about it. Um, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Five years, baby. <laughs> I also studied, get ready for, ready for it, Middle English. Now I have to tell you guys, it's got nothing to do with Middle Earth, okay? It's actually a real language, and it, it fell in between Old English and Modern English. Alright, so I studied Middle English. Why? Because I knew what it was. <laughs> Honestly, I'm like the classic story of zero purpose, and somehow I've ended up in this super cool place where I just get to do what I want on my own terms all the time, pretty much, except when I'm mothering, because you can't hurt those little fuckers, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, but Middle English, right? Do you want to hear what Middle English sounds like? Because, I, you know, three years of Middle English I did. <laughs> Even some um, medieval liter Middle English literature, women's literature, something like that, I don't know. But here's some Middle English. When that Avril with his shorty salt at the draft of March had pair set to the road. <laughs> I was talking about the weather, by the way. Does that sound beautiful? When, when April with its sweet showers pierced the droughts of March. That's it. That's it. No. Got that out of uni. <laughs> <laughs> After that, so I got a bachelor's degree. Oh, I was one year at Victoria, came back to the Waikato, came to Waikato University, finished my degree here, graduated with a bachelor's degree at age 20. Um, in English. <laughs> Did a little bit of philosophy. Still don't quite know what, what I got out of that. It just my brain used to get really messy in those classes. After that, um, there was a boy. There's always a boy or a girl, you know, there's a something. There was a boy and we wanted to get married and he was going to university in Hawaii and so I wanted to go there too. And the only way I could go there was if I was studying because being a student in America you can get a visa, right? So I was like, okay, well what can I do at that university? Oh, I could train to be a teacher. All right, that makes sense. I, I could do that teach people. Cool. At least it means that I can live there with this man who I want to get married to and I was a good Mormon girl so there were other things that I, other reasons I wanted to live with him. <laughs> and living together was kind of important for that. Um, so I trained as a teacher and, um, and because it was convenient and then um, I got knocked up but that's right, because we were married, good Mormon kids, and so that, was, that was okay, I was allowed to do that. And then I was like, well, I want to get my master's degree now, so I just kind of wanted to continue on with that. What am I going to get my master's degree in? 
English. <laughs> Good at it. Actually, by then, I had realized that I really, really wanted to be a writer. And so I did a master's degree in creative writing. Someone once said to me, like, like, like fancy writing. <laughs> anyway, so I got a master's degree. Six months before my master's degree was due to end, my husband passed away. Really unexpectedly. Left me with a one-year-old baby. And I came home to New Zealand, family was here and I needed the support. I was living in the United States when I did the Masters. And um, through all of these experiences, I just kept doing what I felt fairly confident that I could achieve. So I wouldn't say at all that I stayed in my comfort zone, because I could always see a next thing to do and a next thing to do. But I did stick well in my, kind of my wheelhouse. I did the things that I knew how to do and that I felt fairly comfortable doing. And as I went through all these journeys, I, I kept learning about myself. Okay, my husband died. That was pretty yuck. There was definitely some therapy involved around that. There was also a remarriage far too soon to someone I should not have married. But I hung in there for seven and a half years. Don't do that. <laughs> there was definitely some more therapy after that. And, and I'm talking about therapy for a reason. Because I think that part of figuring out our purpose is in fact the hugest part for me about figuring out my purpose is about learning who I am. And it is okay to have times where you're like, oh fuck, I don't know who I am or I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing or I don't know why I feel this way or whatever it is. I kept doing the things that I was good at, walking through the doors that opened in front of me and while I was doing that I was learning about myself. But I did not learn all about myself in one go. Right, and I definitely, in my 18 to 30-ish, I love the ishes, by the way, I didn't know who I was. I thought, yeah, I knew some things about me, and I kept learning things about me, and I kept learning things about me. So I guess, do the things that you're good at, so that you can keep learning about yourself. That's what I want to say, and I'm even going to peek at my notes, because, you know, I wrote down some good stuff. Um, figure out who you are by doing you. That's what it is. Do the things that you're good at, do the things that you enjoy, and you'll figure out more about who you are. So that's my first kind of takeaway for you guys. Now, I have this brand thing going on that people are starting to recognize. I started my business six years ago. Again, it was quite accidentally. I walked through a door, I walked through another door. I didn't plan it. I had no plan to start a business. I had no, this is my purpose in life to teach people how to write better business cases, which is kind of what I do, <laughs> and better emails, which is also what I do. I had no plan to be able to walk into rooms full of engineers and give them a whole lot of shit because they can't write like humans, and they need to write like humans. Any engineers in the room? <laughs> I knew nothing about branding. I just kept doing what felt right. I just kept putting myself out there, <coughs> taking the next step, whatever the next step was, saying yes to things, going home and crying, because I didn't know how to do them. But figuring it out, right, because that's what we do. And then about 18 months ago, I was with some clients, um, Katmandu, you've probably heard of them. I was down in their head offices in Christchurch, and I was training them how to write better emails. And they said to me, you know, Shelley, you need some better um, photos on your website. Because we knew from your website that you were good, we, you know, we knew we were going to get some good stuff, but we didn't know we were going to get all of this. They said, we get this real kind of rock star vibe, and we didn't know that. And I was like, oh, fuck. <coughs> Again, <laughs> I wasn't showing that. And I realised that I needed to, I really wanted when people found me on the magical internet, you know, on the internet, that they would get an idea of who I am and what they would get in the room. So I thought, oh, well, I need some new photos. And then as soon as, I'm just going to keep swearing tonight, as soon as I started thinking about the new photos, I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> now I have to write an entirely new website because the voice on the current website doesn't match the new photos and it just had to be everything. And so I actually started calling it my brand massacre. 
Because I was a little bit worried that if I did this rebrand thing the way that I could see it in my mind, that I might just destroy my business. <laughs> because I wanted to swear on my website, and I wanted to put my prices on my website, and I wanted to say, nah, won't do that, because it's shit <laughs> on my website. <laughs> Who does that? But I could not do it, because it was the next thing that I could see, and it was all in part of this path of me being me, doing the next thing, doing what felt right, always going like that. And what I have discovered for sure, so there was no, I, I did a complete backup of my website, right? <laughs> my previous one, just in case I had to revert back to it. I was like, I've got, got some good clients, pretty sure I won't lose them, they know me, we're, we're good. Don't know if I'll get any new clients. <laughs> so I did the backup. I have not had to go back to that. The, the Shelley that people seem to know these days is because of that brave step that I took. But that brave step was just me going, oh, I'm just going to be me. I'm just going to say all the things that are my truth, and I'm going to trust that there are enough people that that will resonate with to keep my business going. And everyone said to me, oh, well, it won't appeal to, you know, real conservative. You're not going to get the same corporate clients that you're used to. Well, it's brought me about five different government departments. <laughs> <laughs> you were not expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> <That's good. laughs> what I want you to know is that being authentically me attracted my tribe. It attracted the right people. And that gave me more room and more ability and more strength and more courage to continue being me. The more you, you can be, the more you are surrounded by your tribe, you attract your tribe, mm -hmm. and then the more you're able to continue going on that. So I didn't have a purpose to become the brand that I've become. What I aimed to do was just be me. Mm -hmm. And the more I did that, the more I could be me. So, so far we've got know yourself by being yourself. Be you, do you, then you continue to learn about you. Right, once you know you, you can build your tribe by making sure that you present that authentic you to the world. Be really you. <coughs> be brave enough to go, this is me. I don't have to be liked by everyone on the planet. I just have to attract the other people who get me. <coughs> you know? That's it. That's all we need. A bunch of people who get us. Who will be in our camp and who will have our back. Now I'm going to talk to you about writing. For a couple of reasons, A, I teach writing, B, I'm pretty sure that you all do a little bit of writing occasionally. So I want to talk to you really quickly about writing with purpose. <coughs> when I first started writing professionally, because I do the trainings and I write for clients as well, I had this awful experience where I would take a brief from a client and I'd talk to them about what they needed and um, we think we're all on the same page and I'd go away and write their document, whatever it was, could be 50 pages, could be 100 pages, and then um, I'd give it to them, waiting to hear, and they'd go, oh, that's not quite all right. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I realised that it was because there was some clarity missing, both on their part and my part. So now the first thing that I always ask when I write anything for anyone, and I'm even talking about writing an email for myself, the question is, if this document or this piece of writing works, what will happen? So that I am thinking before I put any words together, before I plan anything, before I create a structure, any of those things, I'm thinking about the outcome. So I now can say very clearly that in my writing, I am 100% purposeful every single time. And I can also tell you that when I'm writing for clients, I, know, I never have to rewrite stuff anymore. I, I'll send them a draft because I get to this purpose thing at the beginning, I get to the outcome at the beginning. We get clarity, write them a draft, we'll do some final tweaks, but that's it. I don't do rewrites anymore. <coughs> because if we know, if they know and I know, what does this thing need to do for us? What is the outcome that we want? Then we can choose our words purposefully, we can plan the structure, we can just, all of that stuff. It makes all the difference. So my last piece of advice to you is to communicate with purpose. Before you open your mouth, before you put something on social media, before you write an email, before you write a document at work, what does this piece of writing need to do for me? Put it to work. Let it do some of the hard yards for you. If this thing does its job, what will happen? If you have that clarity, that goal in mind, you are far more likely to write the thing that will achieve that goal. 
and we just don't seem to think about it. So I don't think that I'm a great example of living my life with purpose, but I absolutely am living my purpose, which is how I get to the accidentally awesome hashtag. Because it is, it's completely accidental. It's freaking awesome. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> this probably is. <laughs>